I mean, it all comes down to we either came, we either came from an intelligent, omnipotent, omnipresent, all-powerful God. We either came from that, or we essentially came from Iraq. Can I? Uh Frank, nice to meet you. I'm I thought that's a dangerous name, isn't it? Frank? I don't, I don't think uh, that You said Tim was a good name. I think they're thinking. delicious, though, so like it's good. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking of Frank James myself. <laughs> Frank, uh, <laughs> Frank, what brought you over here? Well, I'm a Christian. Okay. And uh, I love the Lord, and I just uh, enjoyed listening to the conversation. I really like your spirit and attitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to sit down and chat a little bit with somebody. I like that little thing here. Let's chat. So yeah. Let's chat. Do you want to talk about... Uh, well, I, I think that how you from Christian? what I've listened to, from what I've listened to in the conversation, it sounds that you're talking about the difference between faith and asking definitions of faith and different things like that. And what I'd really be interested in is what motivates you to believe that you have a true conclusion. The Bible. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? The Bible. The Bible. Yep. The Bible. Bible. I thought you said. I'm just an ignorant Bible believer. I That's thought you I said am. reliable, and then I was like, "Did he say well, reliable?" It is reliable. Or Dolly though. Parton. It is reliable. I, mean, I was like, "How did Dolly Parton put in this?" Okay. <laughs> I guess here, here's my philosophy. I Frank? believe I believe that everybody has to have a credible, okay, reliable. What? Hold up! You made it on a list. I got to okay, write down. Credible. Down credible. Uh huh. Reliable. Uh huh. Authoritative. Uh, authoritative. Authoritative. That's a pretty big word, huh? You probably didn't think I was that educated. Authoritative. Want me to spell it for you? I, I probably you got it. Anyway. You, you did I probably good. spelled it anyway. Go on ahead. Okay, go ahead. Credible, reliable, authoritative source. Now that's an easy word there. You can yeah. that source of authoritative truth. source of truth. All of us have to have a credible, reliable, authoritative source of truth in order to face all. Can I ask you a question? Them. If I just had a credible and reliable source of truth, is that good enough? No, it has to be authoritative. It has to, it has be, to be authoritative. It has to be all free. Yeah, it has to be all free. Is there any other true. aspects of this that make something more true? Like if I had credible, reliable, authoritative, and beneficial. No, that's it. That's all you need. Credible, reliable, authoritative source of truth. That's all you need. That's it. <laughs> this is the see, list. See how great this is? We don't all have to go any further. That's all it. All right. So let me ask you a question. How do you something become reliable? How does it become reliable? Well, how do you, what, what is a reliable thing? Something that's reliable? Yeah. Like how, what's, something what's the test, aspects of. Something you can test and investigate. Something you can test and investigate. That's so you figure out if it's reliable. Test and investigate. And um, also reveals if it's credible. Let me ask you another thing too. Um, does something that's true need to have all three aspects to them, or in some aspects can it just be credible, and in other aspects it could just be reliable? Like you go through. Well, the as far as my as far as my. Because uh, I've never heard this. Man, I, I just want to make. As sure. far as my life's purpose is concerned, and what I believe and have faith in, yeah, those three things have to be a part of it. They have to, it has to be a credible. At every at every capacity. I'm saying it has to be a credible, reliable, authoritative source of truth for me to trust it. I would love. And I'm to convinced know, that the Bible is. I would love to know a reliable test or investigation on God, the Christian God. Do you mind if we just talk about that? Oh, yeah, sure. We could talk about a lot of tests for the invisible God. So, I guess, are you confident that we have a reliable way to test and investigate God right now? Well, I am I guess I am 100% confident that the creation around us screams that there's a God. Okay. I mean, it screams okay. it. Why? I mean, I don't know how, you could, I don't know how anybody could ever conclude it isn't. Why do you conclude that it is? Oh, my goodness. I mean, you got... For example, you have the grass. The grass gives off carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Or gives off oxygen. Oh, great, great. Don't say that. It gives off oxygen. We give off carbon dioxide. It's great it worked out that way. And you know, if it wouldn't have worked out that way from we the beginning, be here. we'd all be dead. Yeah. Okay, so that, yeah. that's one thing. Right? Okay. Okay, when you look around the world, you just see um, symbiotic relationships in animals. Okay. For example, in the ocean, there's these fish in the ocean. You like to go to the dentist? There are fish in the ocean? Oh, yeah, there are. Do you ever go to the dentist? Do you like the dentist? The, the, the dentist? Yeah. No, I don't like the dentist. No, nobody does. But these fish. These, they like the dentist? They like the dentist. Talk to me. Okay, about, like, about once a month, <laughs> these fish line up in single file. <laughs> Can you believe that? Can't, we couldn't get people here live. So they line up in single file. Okay. And they go there to get their teeth cleaned. They go to the dentist. They go to the dentist? Yes. And a little creature that cleans their teeth. In single file lines? In single file lines. This little creature comes up. It's a cleaner shrimp. Okay. And it crawls in and it cleans its teeth and its gills and everything. And if it didn't do that, all right, the fish would be all dead. That fish would be dead. It wouldn't exist. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Wait, oh, no, not yet. I'm not done. You oh, can't ask me a question. Just, not, just so we can make sure we're like on time. Normally I tell oh, okay. you for like five minutes. Right. So a lot of people around us don't want to Okay, I'm sorry. Ask, you can ask So we have green grass that gives off gases that we breathe in, yes. right? That, to me, is a pretty good test that we have green grass that gets off gases that we breathe in. Yes. How did you get that to be a correlation for proof that a God exists? Well, 
that along with what I'm sharing with you right now, I'm saying that they all How do we test the God? Well, the whole purpose of life being able to exist, if we didn't have oxygen, we wouldn't be here. Right. All right. So it's interesting. It's really interesting. I mean, by chance, but we have a mechanism here present on this earth mm. that provides us the very thing that we need to survive, and we give off the very thing it needs to survive. I mean, the mathematical probability of that happening, it's almost like the mathematical probability of your bones coming together in the right order of your body. I mean, you got 206 bones in your body. Well, most of us do. I yeah, mean, some people have tails. Some people got you got 206 tail. bones in your body, okay? Okay, your elbow isn't where your knee's at, and your ankle isn't where your head's at. I mean, they're all in the right place. Well, you know the chances, how many, you take 206, 206 factorial. You know what that number is? That number's like 7 point something to 10 to the 388th power mm -hmm. of possibilities that those 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 bones could be in. So how but it just turns out that our bones are in the exact order they need to be. Mine, I'm yours, just catching up, just catching up, else. just catching up. So, so that's I want to have a conversation with you. I want to have a conversation. Okay. With you. How does something being unlikely demonstrate that your God exists? How does something being what? Unlikely demonstrate that your God is testable. Unlikely. Uh, how does something being unlikely prove that your God exists and that's a good test for your God? Um, I, I wasn't saying something proved that would be unlikely. You gave me the factorial, the probability, oh, I'm saying, saying oh, the unlikeliness, oh, everything just being together. I'm wondering how does that being unlikely demonstrate that your God exists? How is that a good test for that? God? Well, it's, it, it demonstrates there has to be a designer. There had to be somebody to put this all together. For life to exist the way we know it. How does it planet. do that? Because anything, everything would be gone. There would be nothing here. Yeah. So, like, we have planets where there's nothing. But, like, I'm wondering, like, how do you demonstrate that? Well, I'm saying that. How do I put? Yeah, we do have planets. Way. We do have planets that have nothing on them. I'll and God made way. them. Too. I'll put it this way. Okay. I take a coin, catch it. I did this example. Yeah, I heard you a little bit ago. Pick the coin, catch it, flip yeah. it. It's on the back of my head. It's heads or tails. Yeah. Neither of us right now know if it's heads or tails. Right. Okay. I can tell you right now, man. Do you know how many trees there are on the Amazon? Like, it's almost impossible to count. The leaves that are on each tree on the Amazon, okay. it's amazing. There's no way that all those trees could just be there by chance. That must mean this has to be heads. Like, uh, I don't understand how you're getting these two very desperate ideas. What I'm well, what probability of things existing and then the existence of a god. How are you connecting those two? Well, and there might be a really good connection, but yeah. I'm just asking what that connection is. Well, what I'm saying is, is that for everything to even exist, for us to even have this conversation, for us to have a rational brain, all those things, how can that come about by random process chances. I mean, that's okay, impossible. Okay. It's impossible. I'm saying, give me an example. I mean, if I, if I came into your house sure. and I said, hey, you know, uh, I looked at your thermostat on the wall. I say, that thermostat on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Did it just use out of the wall one day or did somebody make it? Mm. I mean, I guarantee you, you're going to tell me, oh, well, somebody made that. Without a doubt, you're going to say that. I'm saying like I'm saying in my body, hmm. I have a thermostat, okay? When I get hot, I sweat, okay? When I get cold, I shiver. I have an internal thermostat, all right, that doesn't even need to be set. Yeah. Okay, so if I had somebody that made a, if the creator had to make that thermostat on the wall, I'm telling you that the, the fact that I got a thermostat within me, mm. and that's just one thing. I'm saying there's so many things in your body, your bloodstream, the way that your body clocks. If you cut your blood. But how is you, that a test? That's an observation. Proves, it proves that there's an obvious designer. If I brought this camera right here, yes. no one would believe that that camera just does all the time. It proves that we're saying that it's a designer, but how do we test if that's true? Because this exists. If these things didn't exist, they wouldn't be. The very fact that we have all these things around us, it, it screams okay. that there had to be a creator and a designer. How the about fact this? that they all work together. So, all I work, work together. so I work in a lab. I'm sure you have a really great job, too. Okay. If I go in the lab, one of the things I do is I make sure that chemical agents being destroyed in our in our facility. I can't get into the details of it, but more okay. or less, uh, we do test to make sure if it's there or not. And if it's there, we do something else. If it is, we do something else. Okay. But I can't go into the lab and say, can't be there. It is there because it is. It is there because you got to believe me, or it's there because look at the world around us. We have to do very specific kinds of tests that are reliable to determine that very specific thing. Right. You're telling me a very specific thing. You're saying a supernatural being exists yes. and created this. And I'm asking you, without just well, saying this exists, therefore my God exists, he created, I'm asking you, how do we test if that's true? Well, I'm saying to you, the very fact that your brain is even able to create these sorts of things testifies that there had to be a creator beyond that. A little bit earlier you were talking about, well, if somebody has to, can you have reason without it being given to you? And I'm here to tell you that the only reason you have reason is because there is an ultimate God that provided it. And you always ask the question, well, well, who provided it to him? Guess what? He's not natural. He's supernatural. Okay. He's outside this realm. Okay? There has, you're 100%? Be a beginning. there has to be a beginning somewhere. There has to be a beginning somewhere. And you're saying you're 100% on that? Well, see... Your 100% question a little bit earlier, yeah. when he said 100%, he said you couldn't be convinced. That's what you said. I can't tell if you're looking at me or someone else. Right? Oh, right. Oh, hey. <laughs> See? I told you. <laughs>
like, oh, is he asking him? <laughs> yeah, I am 100%. Okay. Uh, and I'm convinced. What I'm saying though is that you it's not a blind 100% because I've listened to, even when we're, when we're talking to conversations here. Are you saying you're unable to recognize anything that would change your mind? I'm saying that I believe that the Bible is God's book. He's revealed it to us. I know you told me that, but I was saying that there's, you wouldn't be able to recognize something that would actually change your mind on that position. Well, I guess in reality, there's nothing that exists that would contradict what the Bible says. But saying. are you able to recognize what would change your mind? Well, if I am able to recognize anything, it's because God I'm not saying it I have it. I'm not saying I have yeah. it. I'm not saying I have it. I'm just saying, like, are is do you are you capable, and do you have the ability to be able to recognize anything that would change your mind on that certainty that you have? Well. Let me go to you this way. Are you able to recognize that there is a God? Honestly. Like, we're sitting having this discussion, and you're you're kind of putting me in a position where, like, say, well, if you say you're 100% convinced, well, I can't talk to you. I'm always open. Sure. Well, I don't mind well, asking questions. My question to you is, that are you really, truly always open? Are yeah, you really I think, willing? I think if a God wanted to let him know, I think if we were talking about a God that wanted to let me know that he existed, yes. I have every faculty be able to recognize that. If that God gave those things to me, oh, he has. And now I'm asking you. He has. Do you have the ability to recognize what? But see, what I'm talking. I guess I answered your question. Yeah, but you're asking me about a hypothetical. Okay, I want to talk to you about a reality. I'm saying that the God of the uh, universe has given you that already. I, He's given it to you in the person. Are hypotheticals son. a good way to like understand things? But a reality is a better one. Okay, fine. But could I use a hypothetical question to like investigate? Like, isn't that a reliable way? to like investigate well legally. hypothetical is mythology it's like you're living in a hypothetical I have three I, apples I and I have the three apples wouldn't you say hypothetically I would have six <laughs> apples like it's not no, hypothetical that's reality that's reality if you have three I don't three, I that's actually six. don't have any okay. apples with me right now <laughs> okay. Okay. I know I'm a great magician but like really I don't but I'm saying like hypothetically I'm just wondering yeah. like is it important let's move let's move aside everything we're talking about okay. is it important to be able to recognize what well, it would look like if we were wrong well of course, that's important to recognize. But see, what you're, you, what you're are you asking, able to do that? Well, what you're asking though is that what, essentially what you're asking is: is there an absolute source of truth? No, I'm not. That is the question. What? Oh, yes, it is because if I'm I sorry if I, I believe that. I have the absolute source of truth, hmm. if I believe it's the absolute, I'm source just of wondering: truth, is, it, is it good? To, is if we both agree that it's good to be able to recognize what it looked like we were wrong? Right. Are you able to do that? But and if I have like an absolute source question. of truth, I already have that. I can't be wrong. Oh. That's my point. If I have an absolute source of truth, if you have it all comes down to what's your both. credible, reliable, authoritative source of sure. truth. I'm saying mine's the Bible, one, you. and in your case, it's your it's your reasoning and your, yeah. your, your whatever, and, and that's fine. But I'm just saying that when you start talking about this subject, that's what it comes down to. So oh. when you're asking me, do I have any reason to not believe? No, well, I don't, because I believe I have the, the absolute source of truth. I might have where someone feels... We're really having a great time here. Thanks, thanks. I'm, let me ask you a question. Okay. I, I'm, I'm hoping this is good for the next talk that I have where someone feels like they might be setting up for like a trick question because I'm really not. Okay. I hope you've seen from like the conversation that yeah, I have. Yeah, but right. I'm really just trying this to interested right. in just trying to find like good ways to understand things. Sure. And I found that the people who are unable to recognize what it'll look like if they're wrong are missing a crucial aspect to having a credible and reliable method to determine if something's true or not. Okay. If I only have a system where I can detect the yeses and can't detect the no's, oh, then I don't have a good system. No, I have a system so, that can detect so are the you? Yeses so I guess I'll get back to the basics. But okay. if, if we have trouble answering this again, it's totally fine. I guess I'd ask for advice of what, how you, would you suggest I phrase the question for the next person? Okay. But like, are you able to recognize what your misses look like with regard to whether or not this God exists or not? That's, I guess, what I'm asking. Like in the say event that, that let's, say you're, let's say a God did exist, but it wasn't the exact idea of God that you had. But it was pretty close. Maybe like 99% close. But you're missing like 1% of that thing. Like you're missing something pretty close. And he's just like, hey, by the way, just letting you know, you got that 1% wrong, but it's cool. And you're like, no, I was 100%. Like clearly there's a distinction yep. there. So I'm asking you like, what is that? What's, are you able to recognize what it would look like if you're wrong? What would that look like? Well, the good news for me is I have an authority source that I can refer to mm -hmm. that tells me whether something's right or wrong. But what would so I can so I can just I'll just refer to myself to the Bible. Okay, okay. If evidence came up, if evidence came up that said something was supposedly true and the Bible said that it wasn't true, I would trust what the Bible says over that over the opinion of the person that interpreted the evidence. I and mean, when you start talking about this evidence thing, I mean it's all everybody's. It's it's a matter of, of people's interpretation when they come to the evidence. It's not the evidence. If I, I, mean, if I have a fossil here, you, know, you can say, well, this guy can say it's millions of years old. This guy says whatever, but all we know for sure is it's dead. That's if I we can really agree. On. If I told you that I knew something existed, but I wouldn't know what it would look like if it didn't exist. Would that be a reliable way to determine if something existed or not? Say that again. You're you're going above my head. Oh, man. sorry. You're saying um, let's say something 
can I go through a hypothetical? Can I go through a hypothetical? Okay, go ahead. I got a jar. I'm gonna take my glasses off. I got, so a, I I got a jar of gumballs over here. Okay. I don't know how many are in there, but now that's how, I say that on the first day. But I come to you on the second day and I say, hey, I know how many gumballs there are in there, but I wouldn't know what it would look like if I was wrong. Would you like to, me to tell you how many gumballs are in there? Would that be a reliable way to come to that conclusion? If you knew how many gumballs were in there, if the I day tell before, you I know how many, but I wouldn't know, but I but you didn't know. wouldn't know what it would look like if I was well, wrong. Well, then you weren't telling me the truth in the first place. Would so. that be a reliable way to determine that? A reliable way to determine what? What's in there? How many? How many gumballs? No, it wouldn't be reliable because you didn't tell me the truth in the first place. Okay, but if I said I had an ultimate source that told me that it was true, well, you don't I, have to worry about but it. But you're not telling me the truth. That's the thing. It's not you're not telling me the truth. Okay. I mean, but you're using an example there where you're like, well, what if I lied to you? Well, of course. I mean, it's not going to be reliable. What if I said I know how many in there because I know grass is green and it releases gases and I breathe in the gases but wait and I a see second. the grass. Wait a second. If we're talking about a jar of gumballs, you can count them and know that. You don't have to refer to that. I mean, come on Yeah, now. I think counting, <laughs> I think there's more reliable tests to figure out how many are in the gumball jar than saying... Right? Are you following with Then oh, saying, sure. hey, I know trees, sure. I know biochemistry. But we're not I, talking about gumballs in a jar, we're talking about the existence of a god. It's a hypothetical. Yeah, what I'm saying, we're talking about the existence of a supernatural god that's all knowing and all powerful. I mean, it all comes down to we either came, we either came from an intelligent, omnipotent, omnipresent, all powerful god, we either came from that, or we essentially came from a rock. Can I uh, throw I mean, out something? Yeah. So I think, in conclusion, uh, we determined that you know it's good to have credible, reliable, and authoritative source of truth. A credible, reliable, I value, source of truth. I value truth. credible and reliable more than authoritative, but we can get on that later on. Okay. But I'm thinking um, it's good to be able to know what it looks like when you're wrong. I think we're both on that same page now. Okay, sure, yeah. And That's why you need an absolute don't, source of authority. And if you don't know what it looks like when you're wrong, like even if you have it as ultimate source or not, it doesn't give you a good method to convince other people that you have a true thing. Well, if you have an absolute source of authority and you don't know if something's wrong, it's because you're not reading the absolute source of authority. Maybe. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Thank you. All right, brother. Hey, thank you. Well, this is great. Did you enjoy the chat? Yes. Cool. It's marvelous. Whose water bottle is this? I don't know. It's not mine.